How's it going everybody? Oliver Motorized here. Finally I'm posting this video. I've been in school for the last two months or so and that's why this video has been so delayed. Anyway, let's just jump into this thing and uh, yeah. So pretty much the first thing that we started with on this part was the battery tray. So I had some scrap steel laying around and I kind of made a box and then you either tighten or loosen that bolt right there and then the door comes down and then you can take the battery out. And then the next thing I did was grab a big old headlight. It's a little bit big for this bike, almost comical, but it's the only one I had laying around and I kind of like it. So next I worked on the kickstand. As you can see, I'm using a little linear actuator to pull up the actual uh, legs of the stand. It's a little bit slow, but it's still kind of fun to use and uh, it definitely sets the bike apart. All you have to do is move a little joystick back and forth and then the kickstand goes up or down. But you'll find out later on in the video that everything kind of explodes. So once I was finished with all the big components on the bike, it was time to start soldering and wiring everything up. As you see here on the table, I actually have our little display panel and then a little housing for all the other little components that are going to be on the bike. I was using a wiring diagram for Arduino to figure out how to program and wire up that LCD screen. This was way too much work. It was a learning curve for sure. All right, so this right here is the brains of the operation. Basically, you can program how fast you want the indicators to blink. You can program the throttle. You can pretty much do whatever your imagination comes up with with this puppy. Unfortunately, what happened was I had all these connections all set up, ready to go, and I accidentally dragged li a live 12-volt wire across the Arduino and uh, burnt it to hell, so I had to restart. Anyway, this is the Connections 2.0. Uh, so I got the male end and then I scavenged around and found a female end and just kind of soldered all these wires to it. And then unfortunately since th those two things didn't come from the same unit, I had to go through and map out where all the colors go and uh, all that fun stuff. Anyway, so I 3D printed this little case for our speedometer and then our tachometer and then soldered some plugs on there and then hopefully that's just plug and play and then I can take it off really easily too. So this panel right here houses all the relays for the turn signals and the brake light. The on off switch sends a signal to the Arduino and then the Arduino activates the relay. I also programmed in a hazard function so that when both the indicator light switches are on the brake and both the indicator lights flash. And what's cool about this is you can program how fast you want it to beep. So here I'm just kind of goofing around and you can make it go really fast. After that I went ahead and 3D designed the button holder. What's nice is the button just slides right on into that little socket that I put in there. And then I can mount that to the bike. As you can see here when you depress the pedal the button activates. Next it was time to work on the electric throttle. I took a throttle off an electric scooter and reprogrammed it for this. Basically there's a sensor and a magnet inside of the throttle grip and as the distance between those two increase the microcontroller picks that up and then you can use that value to control a servo motor. And then here you go, this is the start of the problems. If you see that smoke that's because I blew up the microcontroller. So I decided to replace it and then move on to the speedometer. For the speedometer I modeled up this little component here which will hold four magnets on each corner and then a sensor will pick up each magnet. Take a time between the first one and the fourth one and then times that by the circumference of the tire and then you should get the speed. So as you can see it just goes on the hub of the wheel and then I JB weld on each of the neodymium magnets and then I'll put the sensor on later. After that it was time to install the indicator lights. I first put the switches on and then weld these little tabs on there for the lights themselves. And then I don't show it, but I also put two in the front as well. So in the end, I ended up blowing up two different microcontrollers. And then when I redid the wiring for the second time and finally went to start the bike, half the electronics stopped working. So anyways, let's just see how this thing drives and how it works.
left blinker, right blinker, and this is my favorite part, the brake light. If you do both of these switches at the same time, so the hazards, and it basically turns on both the uh, turn signals and the brake light. And we also have this button right here. That's our headlight. And then this is where crap kind of hits the fan. This button right here is supposed to turn on what's inside of here, which basically is the speedometer. And then this guy right here, which is actually the kickstand up and down button. So basically it either went like that but luckily the core electronics like the blinkers and the brake light work and the starter as well Uh, the tachometer works. So, This has got to be one of the, the biggest all the motorized fails yet. I mean, the bike is really fun. It's really fun to drive. It's got a lot of torque, but just all the little functions that I wanted to work don't, and uh, makes me sad. Anyways, this one's going to go on the back burner for a little while. I really want to work on something else, so see ya.